Hello everybody and welcome back to a lecture series. I'm Ted, your host, and for this lecture we're going to continue on with our discussion of Highland Mesoamerican Civilization. Um, to begin with, let me just go back and recap. In our last two lectures, we have been examining the, uh, the rise of the Moche culture in um, northwestern Peru. We, uh, we saw how um, uh, the Moche and, and uh, later Chavin cultures, um, they, uh, well, in particularly Chavin culture, um, they uh, they rose to prominence due to their control due to um, the geographic the Chavian rose to control due to their geographic control and uh, location. Um, they were perfectly situated to exploit the trade routes between the Andean zones of, of uh, inhabitation of settlement and the coastal areas of habitation. Um, in Mesoamerica, we looked at Teotihuacan. Um, an amazing archaeological site uh, that we we only know really cursory information about. We don't know that much about the inhabitants there. We don't we don't even know who built it there. Um, that information is not known to us. Uh, we also don't know. Um, uh, we also don't really know about the average day to day life. We we know that there was a, a great market there and that the region. Um, was a, a a nexus for long distance and regional trade. Um, we uh, we don't know the original name of the city. Teotihuacan simply means place of the gods, and that was a name given to the site by the uh, the later Aztecs. Um, uh, and then, as far as uh, going going back as far as. Um, the other uh, cultures in uh, in the uh, in the uh, Mesoamerican area, there's um, and again, uh, I, I apologize. I'm looking, I'm thinking about it now, and it's a bit flip floppy, a bit sort of like jumping back and forth, um, and that's because I was trying to uh, give a sort of chronological discussion on both zones, uh, as opposed to simply um, tackling it culture by culture. Um, but uh, but jumping back to Mesoamerica, and in particular to the highlands, um, after the Olmecs, before the rise of the Maya, there were two dominant uh, city-states um, in the first half of the, millenn of, the, of the first millennium. That would be Monte Alban in the Valley of Waka. Um, and, and really, it was a, it was a small rural village. Uh, it was started off at the small rural village overlooking a hill around 900 BCE. The sediment grew rapidly, and by the year 150, Monte Alban was a major city. It was a major player with an estimated population of somewhere around 30 and uh, well, somewhere around 30,000 people. And it reached this height of prosperity between the years 500 and 700. Um, the the village transformed itself into an elaborate urban center, um, equipped with houses and temples, um, all on top of a, of a flattened hilltop. Uh, Monte Alban grew to encompass three hilltops, each with their own central plaza. Now, after the fall of Teotihuacan. The highlands of Mesoamerica descended into disorder as the local cities vied for regionally, um, for, for, for regional dominance and regionally accessible goods. During this disorder, the Toltecs emerged as the new regional hegemons. The Toltecs moved into the Valley of Mexico uh, from the northwest around the year 900. They settled at a place called Tula. Uh, where they built a ceremonial center dedicated to Quetzalcoatl. Uh, and again, Quetzalcoatl is the feathered serpent. Now, the Toltecs were a powerful force uh, and a very militant people. For a, uh, for a short time, um, they extended their influence into, no into the northern Yucatan, most notably at Chichen Itza. Um, looking back uh, to our lecture on the Maya, Chichen Itza began as a Mayan settlement. Uh, that later came under Toltec domination and the greatest artifact, the greatest archaeological buildings and leftover artifacts at Chichen Itza are all Toltec. Now Tula, the Toltec settlement, didn't last long. It was overthrown in 1200. Um, now with Tula's fall, 
a power vacuum opened up in the highlands of Mesoamerica. Now, this is where uh, Tenochtitlan sort of comes into the picture. And of course, Tenochtitlan was, uh, was one of the major, um, if not, if you, want, if you want to call it the major um, Aztec city. Uh, and again, Aztec simply, uh, the Aztecs were simply members of the Triple Alliance, um, uh, an alliance of three separate people. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm sort of, uh, uh, I'm sort of, uh, splitting hairs, at, um, or at least just diverging, uh, too much on that point. Um, after the fall of Tula, several nomadic groups migrated into, uh, central highlands, um, from, uh, uh among them were the Mexica, uh, Me Mexicas, or the Aztecs. Um, after three years... Uh, not after three years, I'm sorry. After years of assaults by their neighbors, uh, this band of nomads founded a small village named uh, Tenochtitlan. Uh, and Tenochtitlan simply translates to the place of the prickly pear cactus. Um, this small village was located in the swamps of Lake Texcoco, um, and it was founded in 1325. And only two centuries later, the city would become the largest of the, uh, 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 the largest city in the Americas. Uh, and at first, the Aztecs lived humbly with their neighbors, gradually becoming and uh, gradually transforming their city into an important market center. Uh, and the Aztecs were keen traders. They married strategically and they formed powerful coalitions using diplomacy. Uh, they, they served as discreet military allies during the endemic wars of Mesoamerica. And they grew steadily um, uh, and, and they steadily grew their power and their influence in the region. In the 1400s, the Aztecs would begin to assert themselves onto their neighbors through ruthless campaigns, um, uh, which, which were accompanied by long-term economic and military obligations. They began a series of conquests under ambitious rulers. They soon controlled a network of cities across the highlands and lowlands. By the 1420s, this network was rapidly becoming an empire. Um, and the Aztecs were, uh, and at this point, the Aztecs were ruled by a remarkable series of kings who reinvented their people. Um, they, they patronized a relatively minor sun god, and they created a huge tribute-gathering network backed up by the threat of ruthless military force. You're going to do what the uh, the Aztecs say, otherwise the army's going to come in and just smack you to bits. Uh, they annually assess tribute demands on subjects. If a subject city balked at the amount or demand, they were immediately invaded, ruthlessly invaded and punished. By 1500, over 5 million people lived under Aztec rule. Um, the uh, the Aztec Empire or the uh, or the Aztec um, social structure was a mosaic of shifting alliances controlled by a small group of rulers and their advisors. Every tribute state was assessed for raw materials. Thirty eight cities did nothing but provide firewood for the capital Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan was a dazzling and highly organized city with large residential areas and thousands of acres of swamp gardens surrounded uh, so surrounded the hub of the Aztec world really the uh, the Mesoamerican world uh, it was the center of the Mer of the uh, Mesoamerican world the central plaza where where were also dedicated to Taloc the rain god and Hutz Zilopotli uh Hutz Zilopotli uh, and again, I apologize. Very bad pronunciation on my on my end. Uh, and, and this was the sun god. He was a sun god. The Spanish recorded that the Aztec market was attended by somewhere around sixty thousand people a day. Uh, the drum of the temple could be heard from over two two miles away. Um, Tenochtitlan was a place which um, which revolved around the sun god. Um, at the center of Aztec life was human sacrifice. They believed that the sun god was nourished by human hearts. By, by human hearts. Um, much of their warfare was conducted for the purpose of gathering prisoners to be sacrificed. Their society, which was rigidly stratified, included a large warrior class. There were, and, and there were different classes of warriors as well. 
with the highest being the Eagle Warrior class. For a warrior captured in battle to have his heart cut out, and again, this is a very, um, uh, this is a warrior society at, at, at this point. Um, uh, and, they're, and the warrior code for this society is nothing short of remarkable. So there's endemic warfare. Everyone is um, fighting um, within within their uh, within their their society. There there's a warrior elite, but within this warrior elite, there are different classes of warriors. And again, the eagle warrior was the highest. Uh, if a warrior was captured in battle, um, he would immediately he would be condemned to have his heart cut out on a great stone dais. Um, and, and that, that sacrifice, being sacrificed, being killed that way, was seen as an honorable death for any warrior. Uh, it, it is thought that the, uh, the soul of the warrior, after being sacrificed in that manner, that his soul went up, um, and, and that he traveled to the sun god. So he traveled to the greatest god and, and, and their pantheon. Now, the Aztecs believed that they lived in a finite world that would end in earthquakes and other violent catastrophes. Cortez estimated um, that uh, the, the yearly number of sacrifices was around 20,000. Um, early historians, uh, in, including William Prescott, wrote of the Aztecs as having engaged in cannibalism. Now, we do not have any evidence, any strong evidence to support this at all. This appears to simply be a, um, uh, a, another incidence of, of uh, Europeans going in and encountering a people and crafting lurid tales or, or carrying on instances of lurid tales. Um, the Kalinago uh, of the West uh, of the uh, of what is now the the Caribbean, the islands, uh, the greater uh, and uh, the greater Antilles, um, not not the greater, the lesser Antilles. I'm sorry, uh, the the peoples of the uh, lesser Antilles who give their name, who have been uh, called Caribs and give that name to the region. Um, Carib is the corruption of the Spanish word cannibale. Cannibales, and and that's because um, the, the Spanish they they went back and uh, reported that the people were cannibals, that they ate uh, other people, they they subsisted off of human flesh, um, and the name stuck, the name still stuck. Um, to say Carib is to say that they are cannibals, which is categorically wrong. Um, same thing with the Aztecs. We don't have any uh, recorded instance of the Aztecs regard um, engaging in any form of cannibalism. Um, it's not it's not our widespread at all human sacrifice yes uh blood sacrifice yes um not not um blood sacrifice not on has epic a scale as the romans um were gladiator games but blood sacrifice nonetheless a very prominent blood sacrifice um and 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 on the sacrifice um don't mean to get lured with the details but um the, the sacrifice itself, it, it was a very, uh, it, was, it was an important ritual, and it was a, a dance to it. Um, the sacrifice would, would go something like this. Um, person placed on a, uh, on a dais, uh, their stomach would be cut open, their, their, their chest cavity would be cut open, and uh, the heart removed and then cut out uh, and presented to the, uh, the sun god um, afterwards. Uh, after the heart was removed, the head was decapitated and placed on a skull rack. The body would then be allowed to tumble down to the pyramid floor. Uh, the body would then be dismembered. Um, there, there were not widespread acts of cannibalism. There were, we don't really have any evidence of cannibalism. Um, by the time the Spanish, by the time the arrival of the Spanish, society was becoming more rigid and the emperor becoming more despotic. The nobles, the priests, the warriors, the traders, they were all forming distinct segments of society. A society that was under a lot of stress. Um, a, the, the Aztec society was, was a society that was uh, really occupied with prestige, um, wars for captives, and uh, what was uh, was really a, a drain on their society and, and of the regional resources. Um, and, and of course, the placation of the sun god. By all accounts, the Aztec Empire was uh, an unstable patchwork of tribute cities who resented the harsh demands of the manor, uh, of the masters. In 1519, 
uh, the Hispanic adventurer Hernan Cortez arrived at the gates of Tenochtitlan. Uh, the Aztec ruler at the time, Moctezuma II, he had heard stories of uh, mountains on the seas. And, and when Cortez arrived, he sent emissaries out to scout out the Spaniards. Uh, they, 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 they took with them the regalia of the feathered serpent Quetzalcoatl. Now, there are stories that Hernan Cortez was thought to have been the god Quetzalcoatl. Now, the Aztecs, uh, a little backstory on the Aztecs, they claimed ancestry from the Toltecs. They claimed that when Tula collapsed, there was a great controversy um, between the followers of Quetzalcoatl and the war god uh, Tezcatlipoca. Uh, whose followers prevailed in this struggle. Quetzalcoatl fled to the shores of the Gulf of Mexico. He fashioned a raft of serpents and he sailed over the horizon, vowing to return um, in the year one read. Hernan Cortez arrived on the coast of Mexico in the year one read. Uh, Moctezuma II sent emissary believing that Cortez was the returning sun god. The emissaries were very puzzled when Cortez rejected their gifts, uh, the, the, the gifts that they had brought to, to, to give him, and threw them in iron and fired cannons on their city. Cortez and his armies, by this time supported by rebelling cities, advanced to the Aztec capital, uh, and, and they took Tenochtitlan in the year 1521 after a very bloody siege uh, and, and that ended the Aztec Empire um, and, and our, our, our lecture ends here but it ends on a very ironic note um, ironically the Aztec world ended exactly as they predicted um, in tragedy and chaos in this case it wasn't earthquakes and other natural phenomena other disasters it was gunfire um, cannonballs and um, and uh, not not musket but arabusk uh, the very inaccurate but, but uh, very still devastating arabusk fire of uh, of of her, of her and band of of, uh, of soldiers and, and adventurers. We'll break here. We'll come back and we will continue on. We'll finish up our discussion on Mesoamerica. Oh, well, this, this ends our discussion on Mesoamerica, but we will continue up and we will end our discussion on um, early American cultures, pre-Columbian cultures, when we look at the Incas and the, uh, the predecessors of the Incas. As always, I am Ted. Hit like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you guys next time for another lecture.